This is going to be a very high level presentation. Uh, we only have an hour, frankly. So what I'm going to do is introduce you to some core concepts in JavaScript. And I'm going to do this through a series of analogies, nine total analogies going back to what you should be comfortable with in, in the land of Oracle. Okay. All of these examples will be using jQuery. For those of you who are not familiar with jQuery, to put it simply, it's a JavaScript library that makes working with JavaScript very easy. It's now built into Apex, so you don't have to worry about installing it. It's there, and you can take advantage of it. The first analogy. A web page is nothing more than a data set. Think about a table, really, OK? Uh, only in a web page, we have a few changes. Essentially, elements are rows, and attributes are moved inside of elements, except text, but ignore that for now. The hierarchy in our web page is established by the page layout, rather than, as you'll see here in a moment, what we might typically use in a table, an ID column, and a parent ID column. Also, we do have IDs in HTML web pages, and they should be unique, like a primary key. The only thing is they're not required. But if you do add an ID to an element, it should be unique in the web page. Here's a web page. This is the web page we're going to be working with today. And really, it's a stripped down version of what you would see under the covers if you looked at an Apex web page. What I want you to do is focus on the first five elements, really. We start with HTML. Under that, we have a head element. Under that, we have a title element. And that title, of course, has some of that text I was referring to. And we go to body. And below body, we have a form. Now, form is the first one. That's the last one I want you to pay attention to now. Form is the first one that actually has some of these attributes. And we're used to attributes, only we see them typically in a different way, right? We see them as columns in a table. Go back to a data set. If you mix this up a little bit, we can have the same data in a format that we're probably more familiar with. It looked something more like this. Right? We've all seen CSV files, and we've loaded these into tables. But let's stay with the concept of a CSV file for now. The first row identifies our columns. And you can see we have ID and parent ID. And Rather than using the page layout to establish the hierarchy, we're using these columns to establish a basic hierarchical relationship amongst the various elements. As you can see, the third column is the element. So we have one row here for every element you saw before in the web page. Everything else just attributes about the element. If you look number one here, the first one is the uh, line two, ID one. That's the HTML element. And the head element, which was below the HTML, you can see it's number two, ID two. But its parent ID simply links back up to number one. right? And then if you get all the way down to line six, or ID five, we have that form element again. And you can see its attributes off to the right there. Again, we just reorganize this. We come back to the HTML web page. All it is is data in a different format. We're just not used to it yet. Analogy number two. When we take the web page and we put it into a browser, what we get is a lot like when we take that data set, that CSV file, and we move it into a table. The DOM, or the document object model, which you know, as soon as a PL SQL developer hears object, we get scared and run away, right? It's not really that bad. When, when we think of table, we think of database object, right? Well, when you put a web page into the browser, you, you get a, a DOM, just a different object. Essentially, it becomes alive. When we have a table in the database, we can do things like select rows. We can do inserts, updates, and deletes. And of course, we can add and remove columns, right? You can do more, but these are the most common operations you're doing with tables. When you take the web page and you put it into the browser, you can do the same kinds of operations. We can select elements. Remember, our rows have become elements. We can also do inserts, updates, and deletes. 
And of course, we can add and remove, rather than columns, we can add and remove attributes. Here again is our CSV file. We move that into the database, we get a table, right? We're used to working with tables. Here is our HTML document. Put that into a browser, and we get this. Now this, of course, is the, you know, what we see on the front end. But behind the scenes, the browser has gone through that HTML content here, and it's looked at all these elements and essentially turned them into objects that we can work with. Analogy number three. Firebug is to your browser what SQL Developer is to your database. Everybody here uses a tool to interface with the database, right? It's probably either SQL Developer or Toad, right? And we need tools to work with JavaScript at this point. It's really important. If you try to do it without a good tool, uh, it's, it's not going to work out very well. Firebug actually has a lot of features that are very similar to what we see in SQL Developer. We can view or, or browse the various objects. We can modify them. There's even a command line tool and, and debugging capabilities built in. Let's take a look. Here we have SQL Developer, and I'm looking at my HTML table. Right, so we can browse the various elements. If I wanted to, I could come in and make a change to one of them. Here's our HTML document. At the bottom here, you see Firebug. This is just a plugin. It's freely available. Once you open it up, I'm going to show you just a few of the features here. We're not going to do all of them. Here's the HTML tab. And you can then use this select option here. And when you hover over various elements, you can see them below. So this is a lot like SQL Developer, right? We can see what's going on with our objects. Here's that form again. I can come down here and do the reverse. I can select over the elements, and they're highlighted above. We also have a command line tool here. And this is sort of like this. All right, we can type whatever we want here. We can run ad hoc queries. Or we can do the same. See the results down here? We can do the same with Firebug. I'm using console.log to just put a little output over here on the left. It's a lot like dbms output.putline, right? Similar stuff. So we need tools like this to work with JavaScript effectively. Analogy number four. jQuery selectors are like SQL queries for your web page. Uh, we're all used to running ad hoc queries on our tables. The truth of the matter is that jQuery, think of the name, jQuery, right? It can do the same thing with a web page. And in fact, just about anything in jQuery always starts with one of these selectors. So selectors are really important. I'm going to show you four total examples. One of the differences is that when you use a select statement in Oracle, uh, especially in a tool like SQL Dev or whatever, you're just used to seeing the data come back. That's not exactly how it works with jQuery. You end up with a jQuery object. We'll get into the detail of that a little bit later, uh, but just keep that in mind for now. 